Hey there friends, Jim Miller with Pure Gravel coming here from Cedar City at the Belgian Waffle Ride with another episode of the Pre-Ride Show. I get a chance to sit down and chat with Adam Roberge. Adam, thanks for visiting with us, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm great. We arrived yesterday, uh, no, the day before by plane, so we had a good ride yesterday to scoot the course a little bit and it's a very challenging course, especially the last uh, one hour and a half or something is going to be very exciting. Uh, challenging and exciting is, I think, a great way to put it. Um, the big topic, I think, is you are in contention for the Triple Crown, yeah. which is awesome. There's just a few minutes, few seconds separating a three or four guys. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about that? Is that, is that a little nerve wracking or is it more you just got to play it out <laughs> and see how it happens? I guess that was not a thing in my mind before uh, Belgian Waffle uh, North Carolina because I didn't do that great in uh, San Diego. Um, but Michael just put some pressure after North Carolina that was like, you gotta win this, you gotta win this. And it feels like it's starting to be a thing. So I I'm gonna for sure go for it. I'm second right now. I have a big gap for first, but I think uh, it's still, 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 still possible. Anything can happen down there. It's crazy, so the, especially like I said, the last one hour and a half is gonna be crazy. So yeah, it's feasible, I would say. Those first two BWRs were so different. They were. Uh, in July, in San Diego, the heat, the, the, the varying types of terrain, yeah. right? And then, we, then you jump into August in uh, North Carolina, wet, muggy, uh, rain, totally different terrain. Yeah. Um, how do you prepare for that physically and mentally? Um, I would say that in San Diego I didn't know at all what I was doing. So it was my second race, uh, my third race af after uh, uh, Gravel Loco and Unbound. And uh, I didn't know that it was really like kind of a road race with Gravel Sector. Okay. Um, so yeah, I I'm not trying to give excuses, but my equipment was nowhere near what I needed. I was running 46 tires because my my bike was stuck at the borders with the COVID thing. It was really complicated. The, so the uh, bike had COVID, or they just wouldn't let it come in. I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe every, and no, nobody was coming into Canada. Not even the bike. I was not able to get in. My bike was not even to get in. So I, I didn't have my bikes for two months. So equipment was not that great. But still, I was not expecting that. But uh, yeah, it was very different than North Carolina. But I would say that in San Diego level was higher a little bit. Also, that, that everyone was there uh, in San Diego. But I guess that's the fun part about gravel. You, you never know what you're gonna get. Like I did the last kilometers, but I have no idea like how the other five hours are gonna play out. You can kind of gauge by how much was the like percentage of gravel, but you don't know. Like gravel can be as fast as pavement, yeah. or it can be literally like 12 miles an 12 miles an hour, like just pushing 300 watts. So, well, know. and as Michael will tell you, San Diego is not a gravel race. We'll find that out later tonight in the, so in the what movie. what is it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the BWR, <laughs> you know. And then we come to an environment like this, which is much different than, than North Carolina, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's so, like, it's amazing here. Yeah. Like, no humidity, in the morning it feels so fresh. Like, honestly, it's gonna be hot for the last two hours, I think. Yeah. Like, uh, the rest of the day, like, even at the start, you'll be a little bit chilly, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's great. I, I like the chilliness with We talked from Canada. before we started rolling about your background in mountain biking yeah. and how that is actually a benefit for you with the combination of road racing experience that you yeah. had in racing professionally, mm -hmm. but that, that mountain biking experience gives you a lot of advantages when it comes to these sports that have varying different types of terrain. Uh, speak to that, if you will. That's I think that's an important yeah. element here. Yeah, I think both, like I think you said it perfectly, both are, are playing a part, I think, because there's still strategy in gravel racing. It's not, mountain biking is pretty much a time trial by yourself and you're gonna race against one or two guys, but the only thing you have to think about is probably to go first in the single track and that's the only thing. But in gravel is a lot different. Like there is, you, you have to energy management is so much longer. So you, you have to play games a little bit. Mm -hmm. There can be break up the road. And the mountain bike aspect, like with a course like here, you have to have it. Like if you're not used to riding single track or riding like sketchy, loose gravel, um, you're done. So I think the mountain bike comes in play for that, for those really technical sector, yeah. Um, we noticed too in following the race in North Carolina, even among the, the lead group, there's a different varying skill ability. Yeah, sure. You know, and you can really see it when you're behind and especially on the descents. Yeah. Um, and that's got to be an advantage for you. Those, those times when it is way more technical is, do you in your mind when you look at a course say, these are points that I'm going to either try to attack or lean on my advantage and be able to try and stretch the group out? 
Oh yeah, for sure. Like we we start to know each other better, um, especially for me coming new that year. It, you kind of don't know who's strong where uh, and everything. But yeah, San Diego was uh, like we knew like Ian was the strongest guy. If we arrive at the last, the last time was picture perfect for him. Super steep. Um, so the goal was to put as much pressure as we could um, in the downhill. So I knew like. Dylan, Russell, and um, what's his name, the, the cyclocross racer? Um, um, Kerry. Kerry, yeah. I, I knew those three guys, like coming for cyclocross and mountain bike, and, and also uh, Jeremiah. Like, they were all mountain biker or cyclocross. So for me, I was like, I just need to put, like, to tell those guys that the, the more pressure we can put on Ian on those downhill sector, the more, the more energy he's going to have to, 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 exp, uh, to, to, um, to give, to come back to us. So that was the, 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 the goal for sure. It, it worked at the end, but Ian was still stronger and was able to come back and then drop us on the climb. So, uh, I mean, at, at that point, we, at least we tried and we took, yeah, Kerry almost crashed in one or two corners there. So It sure put, set off some alarm bells yeah, in yeah. your group when Ian dropped that chain because yeah, yeah, yeah. all you guys were looking around and the, you guys stepped on the gas. Oh, right yeah, hard. we were like, when we, like, yeah. Every time, every time we had a gap on Ian, like it was like go, 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 because we knew, like, yeah. and that's that's bike racing. You gotta know where every uh, everyone is strong and play your card right. Yeah. So big announcement the other day from UCI. Not a lot mm -hmm. of details to it, but still mm -hmm. an important announcement. Mm -hmm. um, what's your perspective on that? How do you feel? Because you're you're in a little different category because you're still considered a professional and have to fall into the drug testing world. Mm -hmm. But what's your take on what UCI is doing in terms of its approach to? gravel anyway we knew they were coming we knew they were mm -hmm. going to do it um mm -hmm. good on them but what's your what's your personal perspective on it with what we know so far um I, like you said the, we don't know a lot so it's kind of hard to say and predict the future I, I don't think we're we're that great at doing that but if i look at road um i know for organizers sometimes it's really hard to put an event and having the extra uci fees can be kind of a i don't know what's kind of a hard thing to do yeah um, so that's my, I'm, sc I'm scared about that because I know the calendar, road calendar in the US, uh, it was very big before. You had a lot, a lot of professional racing, but with the years and the years, it was harder and harder for organizers to um, organize a race and pay the UCI. And if it was not UCI, racers were not coming. So right. they had to do it. Um, so we lost more and more racing. and. Right now, road road cycling in the U.S. is not going well at all. Like it's it's as bad as it, it can get. There's no people that are getting any money from that. Riders are not making any money. So that's that that's what I'm scared about. It is that it destroyed a lot of those small and cool races. Um, on the other side, like you touch on, the, I think there's money starting to be involved in gravel cycling, and there every year there's more and more talent. I, I I think we can say without a doubt that this year was the strongest in gravel, and we need drug, drug testing, we need to get people accountable. Um, I have a good feeling right now, but the bigger and the bigger it gets, um, I like to trust people, but uh, it's better if you know that you, everyone is in the same testing pool for yeah. sure. Uh, you mentioned the calendar, it's been a very compact calendar, very tight. You've been racing virtually every weekend. Yeah. Uh, we're going to wrap up here tomorrow. Is any more racing on the calendar for you the rest of the year? Um, honestly, it's, it's going to chill out just after this race. So as, like you said, I've been racing for the last three months. I've been racing all, all the weekends pretty much and also on the road. Um, so yeah, after this one, I'm probably going to do one or two more big gravel races and have some fun, I guess, riding big mountain bikes with my friends. That's that's the plan for sure. Fall is mountain bike time. All so, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can't wait to see how well you do in the Triple Crown. We're pulling yeah, for you. I'm Good excited. luck. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, um, I was riding the course this morning. I was like, ah, I'm so excited for tomorrow. So All right. Should be nice. He's going to do really well. That's Adam Robert here on the Pre-Ride Show presented by LEL. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the little bell to get notifications of all the future episodes that we have during our time here in Cedar City. Thanks for looking in.